In the heart of Colombia's shadows, Griselda Blanco emerged as a looming specter. Her name whispered with a mixture of fear and fascination. Born amidst the poverty-stricken alleys of Cartagena, Colombia on February 15, 1943, her fate was sealed from the moment she drew her first breath. As the claws of poverty tightened, Griselda started her descent into a dark life. From her youth, she tried her hand on kidnapping, murder, and pickpocketing. She also sold her innocence for survival. Her first encounter with the business of crime came with her first husband, Carlos Trujillo. He taught her about creating new identities, illegal smuggling of people into the United States, and even passport forgery. After a few years of marriage and the birth of three sons, Trujillo mysteriously died, and Blanco moved on to a bigger player in the criminal world. In the tumultuous decades of the 1970s and 1980s, Griselda Blanco emerged as a formidable force in the New York-based cocaine trade. She was introduced into this dark world by her second husband, Alberto Bravo. With each passing day, her influence grew, fueled by a ruthless determination and a penchant for violence that knew no bounds. Soon, Griselda's hold on the white powder industry of New York took a huge chunk of the Italian mafia's business, earning her the title Godmother of Cocaine. She'd smuggle in the illegal drugs within custom-made underwear of young women. But behind the facade of power and wealth lurked a darkness that few dared to confront. Griselda Blanco's hands were stained with the blood of countless victims. Her soul was filled with deceit and betrayal. In the shadows of New York's bustling streets, Griselda Blanco and her lover, Alberto Bravo, forged a deadly alliance, their empire expanding with each passing day. But as the walls of law enforcement closed in, their downfall seemed inevitable. In 1975, Operation Banshee, a massive joint sting operation by the NYPD and DEA, cast its net ensnaring Griselda Blanco and Alberto Bravo as their greatest catch. Yet, like a wraith in the night, Griselda slipped through the fingers of justice, leaving behind a trail of chaos and despair. Griselda Blanco's thirst for power knew no bounds. In a blaze of gunfire, she allegedly silenced her second husband, a demonstration of the darkness that lurked within her soul. And with his death, she ascended to the throne of her drug empire, earning her the title of the Black Widow. In a move to keep Blanco out of Colombia, Pablo Escobar, her top rival in the white powder business, took over the airport and prevented Blanco from ever setting foot in her own country. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to stop her. She instead transferred her base of operation to Miami, Florida. Her mere presence started a power shift that led to gang war. In 1978, Blanco's dark web entangled her with Dario Sepulveda, a bank robber whose heart beat in sync with hers. Together, they birthed a son she named Michael Corleone, Al Pacino's character in The Godfather. She lived in luxury. She had mansions, expensive cars, a private jet, and threw lavish parties that attracted the major players in the industry. But amidst the glittering facade of her lavish lifestyle, a darkness festered within Blanco's soul. She developed an addiction to unrefined cocaine, which gnawed at her sanity, fueling her growing paranoia. Miami's drug trade started to heat up. Rival factions clashed. Their bullets tore through neighborhoods even in broad daylight. South Florida became a battleground, its streets stained with the blood of those who dared to challenge Blanco's reign. On July 11, 1979, the first shots rang out, and the godmother made the first move. At the Crown Liquor Store inside Dadeland Shopping Mall, Blanco's hired guns unleashed hell upon their rivals, leaving a trail of carnage in their wake. The war wagon, an armored van containing high-powered guns, became Blanco's weapon of choice, a clear demonstration of her cunning mind. But as law enforcement closed in, she was forced to adapt. She pioneered the use of motorcycles for assassinations. Miami became a killing ground, its streets echoing with the screams of the innocent caught in the crossfire. Jorge Ayala, Blanco's most trusted hitman, led the cocaine cowboys into the fray, his hands stained with the blood of those who dared to defy his mistress. But there was a flicker of humanity within Ayala. 
He did what Blanco asked, but drew the line on killing innocent children. He even stopped his team from ending the life of their rival's children. But he wasn't enough to save every innocent that crossed Blanco's path. The godmother of cocaine dispatched Ayala to eliminate another of her loyal hitmen, Jesus Castro. But oddly enough, fate intervened. Ayala's gunfire tore through Castro's car, inadvertently claiming the life of his innocent two-year-old son, Johnny. As a man who drew the line at killing the young, the senseless tragedy broke Ayala's heart. In the shadows of her empire, Blanco reigned over a billion-dollar organization, flooding the veins of America with 3,400 pounds of the white powder each month. Despite the threats that encircled her, she embraced violence, silencing dissent with ruthless efficiency. She resolved all problems with a hit. The authorities closed in on her, using her three sons as a bridge towards her hiding places. She had planted her three older sons, Osvaldo, Uber, and Dixon, into the three major distribution centers of her product. The DEA used this connection to slowly approach Blanco. As the law closed in, Blanco made a fateful decision, vanishing into the mists of California, her presence a mere whisper on the wind. She only remained safe there before the DEA finally caught up to her. She was 42 when they arrested her in 1985. She was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. In the cold confines of prison, Blanco's power waned, but her influence lingered. Her white powder empire was still alive. Charles Cosby, an Oakland crack dealer, was drawn to her like a moth to flame. He fell under her spell, igniting a dangerous alliance that would haunt them both. But even as Blanco languished behind bars, her enemies plotted their revenge, turning their gaze upon her beloved son, Osvaldo. Trapped in the crossfire of a bloody vendetta, Osvaldo fell victim to one of Pablo Escobar's men in 1992. As Blanco's trial loomed, her trusted hitman, Ayala, emerged as a star witness, his testimony a dagger aimed at her heart. She felt betrayed by Ayala and even had a nervous breakdown in the aftermath. Yet, even as the walls closed in, Blanco's iron will remained unbroken, her resolve unshaken by the storm raging around her. In a surprising turn of events, a scandal broke out that involved Ayala and one of the secretaries of the Miami District Attorney's Office. This resulted in Ayala being discredited as a witness and the case against Blanco considerably weakened. Later, Griselda Blanco accepted a plea bargain, and in 2004, she was released and sent back to Colombia. She lived a quiet life in El Poblado for the next eight years, despite the number of enemies she had made in the country. But her luck would soon come to an end. Fate had one final twist in store for Blanco. In the dead of night, on September 3, 2012, after exiting a butcher shop in Medellin, Blanco ventured into the streets of Medellin, unaware of the darkness that lurked in the shadows. A motorcycle's roar shattered the silence, then bullets found their mark in Blanco's flesh. It was a grim echo of the murder method she had pioneered, and as her blood spilled onto the pavement, Blanco's colorful and notorious life ended. 